I'm Renee Prillman, and I am the uh, acting head of school at Carolina Friends School. And it's my uh, honor and privilege, really, to be among for our school to be among the schools selected and to listen to the incredible things that you all are doing in your schools. Uh, and my privilege today to share a little bit about the philosophical underpinnings of the project we've been working on and to introduce the other uh, collaborators who are here to share uh, their experience as well. Carolina Friends School, uh, as a Quaker school, uh, has been seeking for some years to create collaborations among other area schools with the focus of creating schools that are safe, learning environments, full of respect across the board, and schools where peaceful and nonviolent solutions to aggression are, are present. Uh, we've been working with the North Carolina Psychoanalytic Foundation in the last seven years to do that work. And the particular vision for this project allowed us to collaborate uh, four organizations together. So Carolina Friends School was one of those, but also Carter Community Charter School, uh, the North Carolina Peaceful Schools uh, Committee, and the Duke Program in Education. Uh, and you'll hear a little bit more about those groups later on. We believe that the collaborations that our schools and local nonprofits and universities can form uh, stand a better chance of our ensuring that children are equipped to go out into their families, their neighborhoods, and the wider world to solve problems related to uh, violence in particular, but also just the way in which we live together day to day. Um, so I want to just say that here today to to share in that work is Crystal Bouchard. And just stand up for a second so people know who you are. Crystal's a teacher at Carolina uh, Friends School and is the chair of the Peaceful Schools North Carolina Committee. And Sheila Cox, who is a teacher at Carter Community School and also the team leader for their Peaceful Schools Committee. Um, the, you can shift to this next slide. The work of this, um, project is based on research that was done by Stuart Twimlow and Frank Sacco, who are leading researchers in the area of school aggression and violence. They served on Clinton's committee task force after Columbine and have continued since that time to teach internationally um, and work with schools where violence was most prevalent and in communities where uh, the issues are very different. Uh, more, more like independent schools where we might see less physical aggression but perhaps teasing uh, the sort of cyberbullying uh, problems that we, we encounter. There are three key factors or aspects of peaceful schools work that distinguish it from other anti-bullying programs or uh, curriculum that other people have employed. Uh, one of those is that, and I think probably for us the most essential, is that a situation that involves teasing or a bullying or a breakdown in relationships in a school is not just a problem between the aggressor and the victim. It is a systems problem. And everyone in the system is affected. And everyone in this buy-in you see at the bottom is responsible. So it takes everybody who's in a bystander role, everyone who is helping children move through the problem, it involves everybody. The other key principle is that this is not a canned curriculum. So it's not a set of manuals or a packet of materials that arrive at the school to be distributed among classrooms and everybody just delivers this curriculum and now kids have the skills they need and parents have the skills they need and teachers and administrators have the skills they need to solve the problems. It begins, rather, with a team of committed school members. It can be staff, teachers, administrators, parents, kids, who, who identify the key problems in their school because it does vary school to school, community to community. And then the staff of Peaceful Schools North Carolina work with the team to come up with solutions that are school-centered, school-driven solutions that are specific to that school environment. That's very different uh, than a program we try to administer to everybody. It takes a long time and a lot of collaboration. So uh, we felt this project was perfect for this grant 
And now I'm going to turn this over to Crystal and Sheila to share more specifics about it. Um, so as Renee said, my name is Crystal Butchar and this is Sheila Cox and we're going to start. Sheila will talk a little bit about Carter Community School. The Charter School in um, Durham, North Carolina, and we serve um, a population that is 98% African American with a small population of Hispanic students. We also serve students who are in uh, need-based areas. Um, my school has been around since 1998. We actually had a charter that was focused on economics when they started out, but the school has since moved away from that, and now we're about to become a core knowledge school which is based more on science and social studies. So um, our goal at Carter is to prepare children for college and lifelong learning experiences starting from kindergarten. Well, it is a Title I school. We do have a high percentage of free and reduced lunch children and we, um, as I said, have serve the African American and Hispanic students in our school. And we are, um, the reason why we have joined up with uh, Peaceful Schools is so that we can, we've seen in our school the struggles that we're having with behavior. Um, this is something I've been teaching for 10 years and this is something I've seen that every year seems to be getting a little worse, a little worse. And so when we found out about this grant, we were very excited because we wanted to, um, their goals sounded like something that we wanted to do in our own school to come up with strategies to allow our students to be able to be heard instead of giving every kid, you know, this is what happened, this is a one size fits all type of punishment. We really wanted to come up with a way for our students to be able to feel like, okay, I'm a person and you're listening to my needs because sometimes when our children are struggling with behavior, they're kind of crying out for help in some way that you can't always articulate if you're just doing an immediate, you know, you did this wrong, this is, what you, this is what's gonna happen. And so this is one of the reasons why our school was very excited to be a part of this grant. And we plan to collaborate with our students, our parents, and the community to help make the strategies that we come up with be very effective and to not just start and stall, but to really carry on in this next three-year process. Thank you. Duke Program in Education is the fourth um, organization that is part of this collaboration. Um, Duke uh, Program and Education has a very strong service learning commitment and a long-standing um, commitment to working within the community. Their pre-service teachers participate in a range of service learning experiences um, and so this was a natural fit for their program. Duke um, very much wants their students to also have this model of a healthy school climate and how do we help students to thrive in the classroom. And so the mission of Peaceful Schools is something that Duke Program and Education wants their students to be familiar with as they um, begin their experiences as new teachers and creating their classroom communities once they get out into the world and have their jobs as teachers. Um, and so Duke has always supported the work of Peaceful Schools North Carolina. They've provided um, uh, meeting spaces, they're actually hosting and create, providing a space for a conference we have upcoming next weekend that you'll hear a little bit more about. And then there's a message from Jan Rigsby who is the head of Duke Program and Education, or former head, excuse me. My name is Jan Rigsby and I'm an associate professor of the practice in Duke's Program and Education and also currently direct Duke Teach House, which, which is a unique living learning community for early career teachers who are also graduates of Duke's Teacher Preparation Program. At Duke, the program in education serves about six to 700 students in its courses every year that focus on the complex issues, uh, psychological, economic, cultural, historical, that impact schools in our communities. The program in education also offers a number of teacher licensure programs, both undergraduate and graduate. And I couldn't be more excited about the opportunity that the collaboration grant offers to our students and fellows to work alongside local teachers, Carolina Friends, Carter, Durham Public Schools, to learn more about the work of peaceful schools. I'm also very appreciative, as we all are, of the SAIS collaboration grant to provide this opportunity for pre-service and in-service teachers to come together to learn more about peaceful schools and to promote this kind of collaboration. So, so to share with you what the collaboration really is from the beginning is um, 
when Peaceful Schools and Carolina Friends School are beginning to work with another school, we begin from a place of listening. And as Renee suggested earlier, because this isn't an approach where we have the answers, just as Josh Clark was saying um, in his program, we really begin with what, who is this school? What are their needs? What's that particular ethos? What's the mission of the school? What are the challenges that that school is facing? And so there was initial consultation with Renee and myself and Gail Taylor, who is the head of Carter Community School. Um, and, and she spoke with us and shared some of the challenges that she sees in terms of the school climate, um, things that are happening within the classroom with the students, and then also with parent population and wanting and also recognizing the um, significant importance, importance of having buy-in at all levels. So for teachers to feel like they are on board um, with having consistency in supporting students, especially when they step out of line and they need some help in terms of their own growth um, for discipline practices. Or how do you support parents whose discipline strategies might be very, very different at home in their communities than what we're trying to create um, within Carter Community School with the Peaceful Schools model. And so after we had our meeting with Gail Taylor, um, we met with a small group of teachers um, to hear more from them and their experience. Yeah. Um, from that meeting with us, we came up with um, areas of concern that we had. Um, one, some of the areas that we were concerned about was we were noticing that when our students um, became angry, a lot of them resorted immediately to violence or just acting out in such a way it was just very disruptive and disrespectful to everyone involved. And so we wanted to have strategies that have to do with teaching our kids how to calm down, cool down, having a space to let them be able to just be able to think and um, just you know simmer down. We also came up with um, strategies for supporting our teachers um, in the classroom because in our case, at our school, we are a charter school and we're small and we do not have you know, t TAs in every classroom to go off and take that child out of the room. We as the classroom teachers, we have to do everything. Um, and so we also wanted to have a place for our students to be able to go or a place for them to be taken to so that the t classroom teacher can focus on the other students and there's not so much disruption and that child can be handled in a way that is more effective than just having them put out of class or suspended from school. And so there were some goals that were identified that Sheila just shared with you. So um, how can we as peaceful schools help these students and help teachers become well versed in um, uh, a, different, uh, a different approach to discipline that is focused on support and growth and this is an opportunity for students to learn from this experience. So a shift from um, the idea of punishment to uh, restitution or um, restorative justice practices, uh, logical consequences. This is the kind of language that we're going to be using to help to shift the direction um, in Carter School. So where we are now in our process is there's this ongoing relationship that we have that you'll notice throughout. This is very important for us to be meeting and sharing together. Um, there is a staff survey that, um, that we just uh, implemented to hear from staff about current discipline strategies. Um, we did do a survey and we had, my school is small, we have about 25 staff. And so out of the 25, we had at least 16 who responded, but it, was, it spoke generally to the issues that we're concerned about which is what I spoke of earlier, dealing with students in the classroom who are doing this, you know, behavior that is very disruptive, um, having a space for them to go, also having support in the classroom, and needing someone from the outside who is just um, focused on behavior. And having a plan in place in which everyone could follow, like steps A, B, C, that we could say, okay, these are things we're doing to help bring down the situation that we're dealing with in our classroom. And we also noticed that the teachers really wanted um, consistency because if you start things out, they want them just to see carry it out. Mm -hmm. And also a consistency in punishment, you know, because there are teachers who will, you know, do a certain behavior. If it's the same behavior, the same punishment is not given. And so we, we want to, those are areas that our stu teachers are struggling with. And since we have to handle everything as ourselves, we are trying to come up with ways that we can um, just have a more effective um, system in place so that our classroom is a lot more peaceful and it helps our schools. And we also talked about getting our parents involved because sometimes what we're trying to do in the classroom, the parents are not aw either aware of 
or maybe not support. So we're mm -hmm. trying to bridge that gap between what we're doing in classroom, what we're doing, you know, and things that are being said and done at home. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's a staff uh, professional development that's coming up. This, this is going to be a busy week for us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in just a few days, there's professional development opportunities where we're going to be able to go and work with the entire staff. And then uh, next Saturday, there's a conference that Peaceful Schools is ho uh, holding called the School to Peace Pipeline, which is shifting and altering the narrative of a school to prison pipeline. Um, this is very, very similar to what Josh was saying. And um, in terms of if you have a thriving, healthy classroom environment that is going to positively impact achievement for students socially, emotionally, and academically. Um, and that research is so important to show that this really is an investment, um, not just in terms of um, an anti-bullying practice, but really in helping students to thrive across the board. Um, something that's very exciting is that this collaboration is leading to more support and collaborations. And so the North Carolina Psychoanalytic Foundation sponsored scholarships for 10 Carter community um, staff members to be able to attend the conference and hear more about this alongside with other public school teachers, independent um, school teachers, um, uh, charter schools, folks in the community that are doing this work and dispute and conflict resolution centers. So it's a very exciting opportunity that's expanding. And I know that we are out of time, so we'll um, I'll wrap this up. So there's another parent action meeting that's coming up in November to help uh, make these processes and uh, available for parents so that they can start thinking about how this might impact them at home. And ongoing um, collaboration, checking in using something like an action research model where we can see what's happening and where our uh, next areas of focus should be. Beyond this year, there, uh, we're hoping to have um, uh, Measurement Inc. working with us in terms of evaluation of uh, is there buy-in, what is, has the progress been, and identifying steps for next year because we really do see that this is not something that will be solved within one year. Uh, typically it takes about three years for this to be implemented and carried through and shift the ethos of the school. We had a short little video at the end to say thank you, but I think we might have to stop it. And the message is thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.